This is the real Remy Brand, and I support Crumb TV. This is IG No Flex Zone. You are now watching Crumb TV. Hey, this is Reggae Boy, and I'm watching Crumb TV. And you're now watching Crumb TV. <laughs> What's up? This is your brother Walsh Red, and you're now watching Crumb TV. Peace, Ashe, Islam, Namaste, Konnichiwa, Nihao, Aslam Alaikum. Walaikum Salam, Hotep, Grand Rising, Respect, Aloha, Ola, Que Paso, Wagwan. Whatever the greeting is in your respective language, I am your humble brother Crumb here for another installation of Crumb TV. You already know how I like to get things started, family. I am on a virtual platform that you cannot find on Google Maps. It's called YouTube. And if you live in that world, smash that subscribe button, Crumb TV. I'm also on Facebook, family, but I call it Racebook. What better place for your favorite races? Hit that follow button, family, Crumb TV. Last but not least, I am on Instagram. If you are on Instagram, give me a Grammy, Crumb TV underscore. So without further ado, family, this is another installation of Crumb TV. It is called Kicked Out of Heaven, the Untold History of the white races. So uh, as you already know, family, I am not a master teacher. I am a master student. So I want you guys to um, sit back and relax because I got a special guest. But before we get into it, I just want to acknowledge the first responders. As always, number one in the building is Frank White, 32nd, my brother from another mother. Peace and love, brother. I see you. I appreciate you. I respect you. Um, we got to link up in real in, in real day, uh, real life one day. Um, number two, the goddess Journey. That's a powerful name. She says, peace. I'm saying peace back. Looking like, oh, shoon in this jang. I know that's right. Number three, the trifecta. He Hester World Inc. Blissful to all and can't wait for this heat, master student. What a way to end the trifecta. Because, yes, I am your humble brother, Crumb. I am not a master teacher. I am a master student. I sit at the feet of the master teachers, and we teach what they teach, and we learn. So without further ado, I want to in introduce my, my um, very impressive guest of the evening. It is my um, my master teacher, Keenan Brook. Peace and love, brother. How are you? How are you doing, brother? <laughs> all is well. All is well. I want to thank you first for coming on Crumb TV. So before we get into anything, can you tell the people who you are and where they can find you at? Um, well, I'm known internationally as the God 720. Um, Kenan Booker is my uh, birth name. And uh, it's also one of my author names. I've, I have three author names. The God 720, Kenan Booker, and the God 720. Um, Many people in Atlanta already know who I am. I used to live in Atlanta, Stone Mountain. Right now, I'm located here in Las Vegas. Um, today, we're going to be discussing my three-volume series I wrote called uh, Kicked Out of Heaven, the Untold History of the White Races, circa 700 to 1700 AD. Brother, 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 this is a godsend for me. I am so excited to really get it in. So, brother, you know, I'm going to let you lead the way. Where do we start in terms of the unt untold history of the white races? Well, this um, series covers a lot of subjects. Basically, on its bottom level line, it's sociology and anthropology. Um, but due to the fact on how the show rolled in and what you said with the race book, the motherboard reasoning, I wrote this book, what really kicked it off was a lot of the police shootings that were going on during the last year of Obama's presidency. And then at the same time, Game of Thrones had just started. So I was already a, a deep reader in a lot of areas of nonfiction, a lot of areas of psychology, sociology, tribal history, world history in general. And I understood that the white psyche had a violent response to the color black, not necessarily black people. Brown skinned people have been classified as black to enhance this. 
because the color black has extremely traumatized the collective white psyche through a mass amount of experiences way before they even encountered um, the African slave trade situation. I can't say tribes because they've been counted tribes before the uh, the slave trade situation began. You know, there's two doors with Africa and Europe, so it was like Nigeria going around, and then you got uh, the back door, which is Spain and France, which is the direct lineage coming from the Moors going up into the French picture, but then through the Mediterranean Sea and whatnot. The, uh, there are documents that state the French and some people from Greece were in contact with uh, Ethiopian tribes um, far before because, you know, Ethiopia is over here on the East Coast and Nigeria and the slave trade happened on the West Coast. So it was uh, um, there's two different time periods of contact that went on. You know, so I wanted to go over where the color was at and you find the color in a lot of different places so the executioners of old europe all wore the color black usually had a dark colored mask uh the hangman's hood is the color brown um the black death occurred in 1347 to 1350 the black death um which was the bubonic plague but it's also termed as the black death this black death that occurred for three years took out anywhere from 25 million to 200 uh, million people um, throughout the entirety of the country. That's in this course of three years, 25 million to 200 million people. Now it's easier to say those words than to actually build the imagery. You wouldn't even be able to comprehend or build the imagery because it's not your DNA to build that imagery, you see. but. If you've had slave masters in your uh, in your history pertaining to what happened in American African American slave trade, or if there's another metaphysical line like your name, your name may be Dutch, uh, English, French, you know, whatever the case, you do have a gateway to see those images and hear those screams, and they're very real. So. Uh, witches wore black, the nuns wore black, the priests wear black, okay? You wear black in your casket, right? So um, the bubble bumps during the Black Death carry black fluid inside of it. Uh, there's multiple reports of uh, human bodies rotting to the point of decomposition before they expire. So their bodies went from white to the color of black before they died. Um, this, you have to understand that the color black um, started being used as the color of death uh, later on in time. At first, the first color of death being used by Europeans was blue. And then after blue, it turned into gray. Then after gray, it turned into black. And the gray imagery you'll definitely see on the paintings of the medieval times. When it comes to the image of what death was, the caricature that got developed from the spirituality that they felt from 25 million to 200 million people dying in the span of three years. So the close document stated that in one region, anywhere up to 10,000 people could die in a week. So um, imagine 10,000 people dying in a week and you have no EMT truck, you have no hospital, you have no um no immediate response or what to do with these bodies and they all had to be piled up in the center of the city okay so um you i'm giving you that type of imagery to let you know that there was a large uh energy in the air sort of similar to what you felt in february but what you felt in february and march that energy that engulfed the planet was only maybe about 20 to 30 percent Maybe, maybe even smaller than that of the real energy of what can come when it comes to this entity of death and uh, carrying out consequence underneath the guise of play. And that's really what was going on, as is what's going on right now. So uh, the color black was also found in some of their foods. Black puddings, for example, is a food that is made out of pig's blood and oatmeal and it's uh, baked into a sausage. 
<laughs> what? Why why do you why do you look like that? You interject at any time because I know I'm saying a lot of stuff that might be woo woo. So interject, let me know where you at, you know. No, 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 no. I mean, I mean, I was I was with you, we were going through everything, you know. You said, yo, are you ready for it? I'm like, yeah, I'm ready. And then the black pudding thing, I'm like, oh, ho, ho, ho. I didn't <laughs> No, here goes another one. You ready for another one? You ready for another one that was black? A food that they used to eat. It's called reversed eels. So the eels that were at the bottom of the Thames River, the Thames River is where a lot of their refuse went. A lot of their fecal, feces, and you know, their excrement went to the local river. And there was also carcasses of cats and dogs in the water. And the eels would be at the bottom of the, of the river. So they would catch these eels. And then when they killed them and chopped off the head, you stick your hand in it. You grab the bottom and you reverse it inside out, and then you cook it. Yeah, and then you eat the meat from the inside. But see, these are unclean things to be eating. And during these times, their whole cultural understanding was based upon, uh, was founded on religion. But at those times, it was founded more so on the saints and the litigation of the Catholic Church more so than Christianity. It wasn't fully developed yet, you know? So, yeah. So that's that's a couple of things that I found with Inside the Psyche of Black. There's a lot more, you know, that are uh, definitely directly related with ex uh, traumatic experiences that uh, are downloaded inside the blood and the DNA. And that is a science called epigenetics. That's a theory that I uh, discussed in the beginning of the book. Um, before you even get to any literature, I go over epigenetics, which is the founding, which is the majority of all of this, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely familiar with with, with epigenetics. We talk a, a lot about that in terms of uh, post-traumatic slave syndrome. Uh, Dr. Joy DeGruy was one of the leaders within tying that uh, um, not only to uh uh, post-traumatic stress disorder for military uh, 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 soldiers, or I'm sorry, veterans rather, but also our, our, our brothers and sisters who have to endure uh, endure the, tr the traumas that our ancestors uh, had to endure uh, under, under slavery, but genetically. So yeah, I'm definitely familiar with that part. I wanted to ask you, uh, a good brother, why do you call it the fall from heaven, you know, in terms of white people, you know, going through their shift down oh because um that was the mentality the entire time they didn't know if they were being punished by god and they don't know if god sent the devil to punish them or if they were being directly tricked by the devil and getting uh punished through that lane so everything like i said the cultural understanding of the time was uh wholeheartedly founded on theology okay and it was based on religion so they based all of their experiences that they were having either off of uh, saints or angels or devils or demons, you know, and they didn't know if they were, you know, kicked out of heaven or not. It, it was like they were kicked out of heaven, basically, you know. So, wow. They were like in a real weird confusion space because and the, and the reason why I haven't talked about that yet, but that was the weather section that imposes that, which is the first chapter. So the first chapter, you go over a thousand years of natural disasters that are extreme. And I'm talking about extreme to the point of 100 pound hailstones. Um, 15 inch wide hailstones were documented. There was a time period, I believe in France, where there was three years of no sun at all and continuously, uh, continuous rain was going on. Yeah, you see this today. So like the Italian thing being in the boat, the romantic thing, and the whole city is in water. It's because it was it was uh, flooded a lot. There was one flood called St. Elizabeth's Flood that took over 100,000 uh, to 200,000 people out. I think it could be more than that. Um, don't quote me on those numbers, but the numbers are definitely in the book. Uh, all the dates, locations, names of uh, the weather situations, and all of that are inside the book. There was a lot of famines that were described. So, for instance, um, locusts took over. Uh, locusts would take over. Like, there's a locust situation going on right now in Kenya and Ethiopia and Africa. 
But locusts would take over. And when locusts travel, their most extreme um, traveling documented is five miles wide, at tw 20 miles in length. So they can block out the sun. And what the uh, chroniclers of the king's court during those times were documenting is that these uh, locusts were humongous. They were big. They were like this big. So the feces from the locusts would create a famine. The people trying to kill the locusts would create a putrid smell from all of the dead bugs. The dead bugs would actually kill the wheat. The wheat, they wouldn't be able to eat. So then that eat, not being able to eat, led them into plague and the pestilence because of the bugs and the conditions, but also led them into cannibalism and led them into de several different forms of cannibalism too. So, and also eating of animals, you know, things of that nature. There's a lot of extreme stuff in here, bro. You're going to hear screams. Like. Yeah, brother, you got to tell me a little bit more about that cannibalism. Please, please, and thank you. <laughs> um, we today look at cannibalism. Okay, cannibalism has two sides. One side is an extreme ancient art that predates Egypt. So we're not going to go to there. But there are percentages of that within what we're discovering inside of Europe, okay? Now, old Europe, from what the documents state, cannibalism was not a thing that was uh, selected. It was forced to survive. They've been through so many situations of extreme survival that the elements that helped them to survive, they fell in love with in order to survive. You have to understand if I fall in love with death, you can't defeat me. <laughs> Teach, Muhammad. You see, so that's how it works. So basically, they were forced into situations of extreme survival, eating plague bodies, eating children, children eating parents. Um, you know, there was also high levels of expression of love of women who had to sacrifice themselves to their family for consumption so their family could survive. There's stories of that inside the book, right? So you have to understand that the elements that you may think are extreme evil also can have a high percentage of love inside of it as well. Touche. Touche. You see? So, right, that's what I'm telling you, bro. This level of understanding is understanding of existence. This is real. This is, you know, this ain't no, no joking around shit right here. <laughs> you know, I didn't mean to cuss or anything like that, but you know, the, um, you have to you have to understand that the medieval times is the only civilization on record that I know that understood balance. They loved their evil as much as they hated love, and they loved love as much as they hated evil. Damn, Gina, teach. You see what I'm saying? So they're the only civilization that I've ran into that understood wholehearted balance and incorporated it. So for instance, when we talk about medicine, and you might say, oh, okay, the first cough drop comes from honey being mixed with dog feces when it's white. Okay? You say that's disgusting. But I can show you many human parts and a lot of feces being used in Egyptian uh, medical documents as well. Now, see, a lot of this information isn't being brought to the populace because the populace is immature. You're uneducated about what's going on on this planet. And then not only that, the African-American culture has been raised with a one-sided thinking dynamic. Western culture in America is the only culture in existence that has a multitude of religions that is only one-sided. Now, name me the activity of the devils inside Christianity. Name me the activity. Name the devils inside Islam. The NOI. You have no balanced thinking. You have one-sided thinking. So you don't understand existence. But you experience existence every day because you take shit. The shit stinks. Right. So you just made shit. While you're sitting up here trying to wear the white linen and do the yoga, your body just made shit. And it stinks. It's rotten. And you'll get sick. You'll die if you play with it. Right? The baby plays with it, though. So why does the baby immediately come into the planet with all of these acts that are considered immoral? 
and we have to express violence on the baby in order for the bio, in order for the baby to be socially sound to our measure whatever cultural measure that we uh, agreed upon by manpower you think you see so our whole system of thought as African Americans is unbalanced we have no doubles for explanation of the dark side and how it operates. You have to also understand that a lot of these things, devils, demons, different caricatures like the fiend and you know uh, the wraith or whatever that you'll find in the medieval times are also, uh, it is a cartoon drawn around a psychological space in order to take it outside of the human body and objectify it. Once you objectify it, you can control it. Because you can't control what's going on on the inside of your body right now. You don't know where the next pus bump is going to show up from eating that fast food. Right. You see? So, <laughs> so with that type of, you don't know, you can't control what's going on on the inside of the body. So in order to control the elements of the mind, you have to, um, you have to capture them in cartoons and caricatures. That's why I was explaining death earlier. Because that's what the plague did. There was so much, there was, it was in the air so strong that they had to put a cartoon or a character behind it to represent it. So now we know what it is. And now we can dance with it. Dance with death, right? Now death can dance. Now death is alive, right? Now death feels at home because he has a place, you see? Until your psyche and the, the unified thought that you'll find amongst your people from uh, similar experiences that they went through uh, can draw cartoons and caricatures behind them and understand these are the, as the embodiments of different areas of our history, then, you know, we can get some progression, you see. So when it comes to a character like a Sambo or uh, or Uncle Ruckus, which you can both find those in my book, Real Nigga Etiquette, the Voodoo Edition, which I broke down the origins of those and where they come from, because Sambo actually has a, gra a grave site in London. Did you know that? Yeah, Sambo was a little boy that um, went to London after the big, after the first, uh, after the Toussaint situation in Haiti. And supposedly, we don't know if there's a little boy's body in that grave or not, but the word embodies the energy. So that grave site in London, to this day, gets visited by all types of people It's a tourist site. Because the little kids from the local schools put rocks all around it and they put little flowers around Sambo at the park. There's a little park and there's a tree that's by it that has a lot of metaphysics to deal with it too. So then we when we utilize the word Sambo today in America, it works. And it, it's a cloak upon you because it has a body, it has an energy that's already embodied inside of it. And plus that that battery that keeps that energy alive is consistently maintained by these little kids over here in this gravesite that's all the way over here in London. We didn't know nothing about it, you see. So this is the same type of situations that we're running into. There's a lot of a lot of this type of explanation going on in the kicked out of heaven. So for instance, the word felony. The word felony means suicide. So as soon as you commit a felony in today's society, you have conducted social suicide. You are now barred from working a regular type of job. You cannot vote. You cannot do this. You can you see? They're playing a game. Yo, they're using the English language is I can at least say 800 years old. But you have to understand that a lot of the words that are used inside the English language predate that. So it's safe to say if we were to uh, estimated it all together. I'll give it about maybe 2,500 years old, the English language. Now, so if these words are that old, what stages did they go through before your usage? Right. How were they used in time? Now, how they were used in time embeds the structure into the word. So then when the word is thrown onto you, it's automatically... Uh, a cloak classified on you. So when you call somebody an idiot, idiot works, right? You call somebody an idiot, and we all know that means ground dumbass, right? But guess what? The word idiot was a medical classification during the mid during the medieval times. Yeah, idiot, stupid, lame, blind, dumb. All of these words 
uh, were medical classifications, even when it comes to, um, you know, witch classifications. You got shrew, you got the word mascara, means old witch. Yeah, to tame a shrew, which is a Shakespeare's play, they're talking about an aspect of the witch. Or the word tempest, or to have temperature, or tempestari, those were a form of witches during the um, during the medieval times. All of that stuff is in these books, you know. All of these, uh, and over a thousand pictures in these books. Okay, I got yeah, over a thousand pictures. They're all in color. All three volumes going for a hundred dollars. Get my link. Go to the website, um, kickedoutofheaven.com or keenanbooker.com. And it's all right there. It's available. And I'm giving you real game. This is coming directly from them. Remember that. It's coming directly from them. Okay? So, for instance, I have uh, execu uh, Executioner's Diary inside Volume 1. Yeah, his personal diary. And he's explaining on um, how, how the criminals that he killed, how he had to kill them. Um, he's explaining his relationship with the local court. He's re explaining his relationship with the alchemists. For instance, he had to sell, he was, he would sell, uh, female body parts to the alchemists, of uh, during those times, their organs as well. But you have to understand it once again, now nah, we can point the finger because that's a lack of our intelligence. But I'm gonna tell you right now, you go through the medical documents, of uh, Rome, Greece, ancient Egypt, and I'm pretty sure I can find it in the tribes as well. Human body parts are used. Human feces is used. Okay? Bird feces is used. Okay? They used to put bird, they used to put bird feces in their wine to cure the colic. <laughs> yeah, the colic is what they call it. <laughs> yeah, that's in volume two. Volume two is a mastermind. This right here, this is a beast. If you can get past the plague section. You better get it all the way through volume three. Volume three is talking about the Catholic Church. So I got over 120 black Madonnas in the from the Catholic churches all across the planet documented inside the book. I'm also talking about the uh, the incorruptible saints, which would be our modern day ancient Egypt mum mummies. Okay. Ah, you see that? A lot of people don't know that uh, all of the saints of ancient Egypt may have been they may have been sprinkled through Greece, but they are embodied inside Catholicism. And that's why nobody knows nothing about Catholicism <laughs> because it is a humongous magic system. And there's a multitude of different layers of magic systems within magic systems in Catholicism. How I go about Catholicism is very different from what you would be taught from your local uh, bishop or whatever, priest or whatever uh, about masses and all that. I don't intend no mass and none of that. But you see the Catholic symbol. This is a Catholic symbol right here on my hat. You see what I'm saying? So, but even in Atlanta, where do where do they all report to in Atlanta? Where's that? Abernathy. The Black Madonna, Ooh, right? They, cool. all, they all go to the Black Madonna. And it, exactly. The Black Madonna is Catholic, my friend. Okay, let's let's keep that very clear because I've been given the responsibility to bring Catholicism to the black people here in America. And, you know, that's a heavy weight on the shoulder because they don't know what the hell I'm talking about. So just to put it out there, just to be simple with it. Catholicism has more black imagery for worship purposes than any other religion underneath the sun. And you get you wouldn't be able to com com you know, combat me with that. We, You could pull up anybody for a debate on that one. I could show you well over 20 to 30 male saints, black male saints with more in the name, okay? I could show you, oh, like I said, in the third volume, I have over 120 black Madonnas in there, okay? In the book, I'm showing you pictures, live color. It's real, very real, very strong. You'll feel the power through it, you know. And a lot of these Black Madonnas are called, uh, like the one in France, uh, is El Afrique. Her name is L'Afrique. Yeah, bro. Uh, the name Notre Dame is actually Black Madam. The word Norder is coming from 
Uh, yeah, yeah. The word Notre Dame is actually Black Madonna. The word Nordic comes from Nord, which is French for black. And then Dame is uh, Madonna. You know, Dame comes from, you know, the line up. But yeah. Teach Muhammad. Teach Muhammad. <laughs> That's where it's at. And you have to understand a lot of people um, don't get Catholicism because they don't understand the woman. And the sciences of the woman have been uh, extracted from our current understanding during the 1700s, 1800s. And more detailed during the late 1800s, they took a lot of words out of the dictionaries during those times that classified a lot of social positions of women when it comes to witchcraft and coupledry. Yeah, because you have to understand that, um, you know, Christianity is a cuckold religion, you know. Yeah. So when when I say Christianity is a cuckold religion, Adam and Eve, that was a cuckold situation, right? And then St. Joseph and Mary and Gabriel. Gabriel fell to earth to have unison with Mary in which Joseph was holding camera. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a cuckold religion. But and I'm gonna be going over that in my next books. My I got another three volume series coming out right now. I mean, it'll be out in about a year or two. But you know, there's some real heavy stuff in there. But uh, yeah, Christianity is a cuckold religion. And if you notice that I said Catholicism, because uh, Americans get no O, oh, they get no omnipotent. They say Catholic. They don't say Catholic. Yeah, bro. Mm. <laughs> There's a reason why the Pope don't visit America. Yeah. Why is that? Because this is this land is designed after witchcraft, bro. Everything here is designed off witchcraft. Everything, this whole... But you have to understand this is the yin and yang principle. So America, yang, Europe, yin. Europe is female. Catholicism. Catholicism is Mary. Madonna's. America is Christianity, male. Jesus, you know, Jesus is Jesus is like on the third, fourth. He's like ranked the third, fourth saint in Catholicism. He isn't even on the top tier. And there's a lot more saints that have done uh, way greater miracles than what Jesus has. And there's over four thousand to five thousand saints. So you know, just to put a little, just to bring you home with it. You have about 10 to 20 saints automatically aligned to you just by your day, the, the day you were born on. The day you were born on is called a feast day. They have a feast day for every day of the year. And there's about 10 to 20 saints that are aligned to that day for certain events that happened to them or the day they were born on or the day they died on correlated in history. All of these individuals will have very personal connections to your life. Now, what I just explained to you, the average Catholic doesn't know that. But this is the way the system is designed in comparison from a uh, astrological mythology standpoint with Egypt. Okay. 4,000 to 5,000 saints. How many aspects of the gods in ancient Egypt? You see that? Exactly. Exactly. Exactly see that so the science is ill with the saints so you, you're gonna find a saint for every name that's out here valerie victoria adam it doesn't matter what name you say gregory there's gonna be a saint behind you you see what I'm you got that level too and then your birth date level is a feast day and you can use these saints based on their principles you know and those principles are also encoded into your personal characteristic dynamic so you could use these for your occupations. You know. That's powerful. Yeah. You know, I I, I wanted to say, brother, because I I I I must demonstrate being a uh master student. You know, uh we have to be quick to listen and slow to speak. Um, I would say 90% of the, the content you've dropped, I've done a video about damn near everything you you've talked about, and I think you'd be impressed with my catalog. But you know, mm -hmm. when I, 
you know, when I have people on, it's not, you know, to demonstrate my portion of understanding because I already know what I know. I want to know what you know. And yeah. um, that's why I just really enjoy the opportunity to, um, you know, have have an exchange or or just somebody to even teach me because I know when I sit down at the feet of these European women, they come with this crazy pseudoscience, biased information, unbalanced, yada, yada. And, um, you know, it, it's it's got something behind it versus, you know, someone like yourself, I would take as a more legitimate and um, safe source. I can get to the person this are uh, 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 really pushing pushing the information versus this uh this corporate system. But going a little bit deeper, um, you know, because I am vibing with you five thousand percent and you're on fire right now. The family is going uh nuts right now. Can you see how many people are watching right now? No, I, I don't I can't I okay, can't see okay. it doesn't show any numbers or anything. Okay, okay. We, we we're on several platforms, but for the most part, YouTube's going crazy right now. We got about 160 people, I guess, watching, 159 to be exact. But um, we're on Twitter as well. I'm, I'm blocked on Facebook. I've, I'm just too racist for them. But nonetheless, <laughs> the, people, the people are 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 really uh, digging what you're saying. I know initially you were like apprehensive, like, yo, I don't, I don't know if the family's ready. Uh, but you know, brother, you you have been well received on this platform and I wanted to encourage you, please continue. Um, uh, I mean, it's crazy. We're in the midst of plague right now, but I call it plague because that's how I understand it. You know, I dropped this book, this one right here. It has about a 200, 300 page section on the plague. Um, on over uh, 300 to 400 years of plagues. So there's a lot of different plagues talked about and what happened. This book was published March 31st, 2017. Nipsey Hussle died March 31st, 2019. So I want to say, yeah, I'm, I'm very highly connected with Nipsey Hussle in a lot of different rooms. My music, you can check out my music online. Go to The God 720. I'm on Spotify, Pandora. I do music too. So all of that, you know. And um, the plague, man, is very serious. What you're witnessing right now, and I want to do that because there's a lot of people here. Um, what you're witnessing right now is called, what I'll call it, is the poltergeist. You're not witnessing anything that you can put underneath the microscope. You're witnessing mind frame movement. You have to understand that it is well documented that throughout a multitude of different plagues that happened in between 1347 all the way to the Great Plague of London in uh, 1665, you will see that the plague has a mind of its own. It will jump over people, it will jump over homes, it will jump over whole cities. It'll wipe out only children, it'll wipe out only mothers, it'll wipe out only the males, okay? It'll only wipe out males and children, skip over two towns, go to the next town, skip over a house, get everybody inside the house, only let the little daughter live that's inside the baby crib, okay? Uh, go inside the house, only kill the great grandma inside the house, everybody else lives. OK, so you have to understand that um, there is no way of dodging this. You know, if you're selected through your heinous acts because you were defunct in your uh, common courtesy and how you socialize with others, then you will be snatched. And that's all there is to it. Um, we've lost our respect as a human race. And this is what has also occurred in a multitude of different civilizations when we talk about the plague that happened during the Byzantine Empire, when we talk about the plague that happened during the Frankish Empire, when we talk about the plague that happened during Greece, Rome, ancient Egypt, there was plagues in all these civilizations. And what was recorded during uh, as the social acts of the average day citizen was arcane activity, okay? Uh, similar to what we have today. Um, the exception of the unspeakable act is what they called it during those times. During those times, the homosexual vice was considered so 
uh, detestable that they didn't even want anything referencing it, leaving their mouth or having their mouth creating anything that had a def had a definition that was so defiled and defunct. Okay, so your LGBT community is what has brought in your plague, your coronavirus, or whatever you want to talk about. Now, coronavirus, there is also a Saint Corona. Um, as I told you, the saints conquer all words. So there's Saint Cloud, Saint this, Saint this, blah, blah, blah. Saint Corona is the saint that stands over money. She is the saint that stands over gambling and money problems. You can look it up. Just put in Saint Corona Wiki. All saints have a wiki page. So you can just look it up. It's right there. Okay. She's the saint that deals with those issues. And ever since we've had this situation, we've had a multitude of different money issues going on. A lot of people have seen a lot of new money. I've gotten a lot of money uh, since this whole situation. Now, I'll never have to work a job again because of the situ the money situation that I've got involved in because of this whole plague scenario. And I have to give thanks to St. Gertruda for that. St. Gertruda is the one that stands over the Dominican Republic. Um, she's mentioned in the uh, Real Negative Voodoo edition. You see, so to get down to the details of the plague, you're not seeing it. For number one, you haven't seen any situation where anybody's dying in their home. You haven't seen any situation where there are bodies piling up in the public. You haven't seen any situation where somebody died in the public, meaning you were at the grocery store, you were at the train station, and you've seen somebody start throwing up everywhere and they died, or they went to a seizure situation and they died instantly. Since you have not witnessed those things with your own eyes, nor have you witnessed the individual passing out while driving and causing mass car accidents. If you have not seen these situations, guess what? There is no plague. You're dealing with master illusionists, okay? Yeah, you're dealing with master illusionists. Go ahead. Yeah, interject. Come on. <clears throat> you know, brother, um, this, this, this live was going so well. And the reason why I've been so silent is I'm kind of scared to speak. I don't want to scare anybody away or upset my guests or anything like that. But in the back of my mind, <clears throat> I wanted to ask you what your thoughts on uh, were on, you know, the whole epidemic. And for me, I've, I've made several videos saying there is no epidemic. Um, I've, I've taken a couple strikes. Some of my biggest videos have just been removed as of recently, which I'm not going to lie. It did kind of hurt my feelings just a little bit. Um, so, you know, I've just been very troubled within this world of people who are saying something and I know it to not be real. And I didn't want to say anything to you. I'm like, you know, he's going to say something and it's going to ruin the vibe and he's going to think I'm a nutcase. But now that you say that, brother, you don't know. I'm I'm over here. There's so many damn Gina's going on. <laughs> There's so many damn Gina's going on in my head right now. <laughs> 1665. Teach Muhammad. Teach Muhammad. You see the coffin? You see the coffin? You see this? See this right here? This was written in 1665 by an individual who experienced and documented everything that he saw pertaining to the plague. Okay? I just wanted to put this up while he was still talking. I didn't even finish this whole book. Okay? Let me show you another one. Where is it at? Where is it at? It might be. Oh, here it is. This one right here. The Decameron, okay, by uh, Giovanni Boccaccio. This one also talks about the plague situations, you see? This is real literature. You can smell the dust off the paper. This, is, this ain't no joking. I'm Jeez. telling you today that what you are experiencing is not plague. I am a historian that cannot be debunked on this issue. This book right here, which is a paperback, and the fourth book I wrote has been valued at $3,214. This book is being studied by, by Oxford and, um, and United Kingdom. We're talking about Cambridge University, Oxford University. We're talking about Jesuit schools know my name, okay? They study my stuff in Rome, Vatican, all of that. And I have proof to show you on my academia.edu on what type. The Citadel is reading my is reading my stuff. What are you talking about? This is I'm not playing. I'm telling you, I know what I'm talking about. There is no plague out here right now. Okay. Uh, what you are you're witnessing two things. 
dumbasses, and delusion. Now, what, now, now, let's go over it. Let's say it is real, okay? And let's figure out how is it real. If we are going to say that it's real, we're going to have to go off of the reality of what we got in existence. So we have 20 years of chemtrails, right? This brings a possibility that there's 20 years of chemtrails in the air. We've been inhaling this. This brings a possibility, okay? Now, what is a disease? A disease makes the body weak, right? Right. You're weak. You're in the status. You can't defend yourself. Now, there's a lot of... Now, disease also comes from mind, right? Right. Doctors say cancers, 90% of cancers are started by thought. Okay. Yeah, people don't understand that. A cancer ain't nothing but a multitude of one thing inside your body. So it's like you just ate Dorito chips for 30 years and you didn't switch up. That's all it is. So now you've got a Dorito cancer that's attached to something. You know what I'm saying? And they call it that, what it's attached to. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? you got to right. switch up your diet so you don't, right, so you don't have a buildup. But anyways, 20 years of chemtrails. Then we have weakness. Dollar menu is weakness. Woo! Go fund me is weakness. GoFundMe is a form of weakness. This is vagabond thought to beg. beg is, begging, is not, begging is not permissive as God ordained you to work. Right. So begging right. is not permissive. This is of the devil's arts. Right. So you getting the GoFundMe page and asking for donations for whatever cause it may be is a status of weakness. Now we get on the Facebook, we get into a car accident, and I got the fucking cord up my nose and all this other stuff. What do we do? We expose our weakness to the world. We say, Ooh. I am weak. We put up pictures and say, pray for me, I'm weak. And then, oh, my, my children died, my, my grandma died. Look at my weakness over here. Can I get some energy from a weakness? Sympathetic. This is how the vagabond, I don't want to classify indigenous as a vagabond, but we do use similar at, um, mentalities because these mentalities are based off of feminine structure thinking. You see what I'm saying? And females do what? They beg for money when they ain't got no bills. I mean, can't pay them bills. And that's what little Tommy grows up watching. And then he's duplicating it. And then that's what we're seeing now. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> you see, weakness, weakness, weakness. So what happened over the past 20 years, male doesn't know how to communicate with women. This is weakness. Texting over vocal communication. This is weakness. We have imposed and accepted a lot of different forms of weakness over the years. Our music, a saxophone used to be made by human hands, okay? It used to be molded into place. So not only when a person plays the saxophone, you're hearing the energy of the individual, of the family and the bloodline that made the saxophone, plus the energy of the artist that's using it right now. So there's a combination of, of things that have been accepted over time that has brought the physiology and the whole the overall dynamic of the human into weakness which in essence a dog could fart in the room now and 20 motherfuckers die because you're weak overall you've accepted a bunch of weakness what, what, what was they telling you three four years ago before the corona thing hit mental depression oh you're depressed oh you're this oh you're the where did the men, mental depression and the anxiety come from that came from the alcoholism they didn't tell you anything about alcoholism, right? 20 years of our women going into these clubs, drinking for free, and now they're all drunk hags with these weird shaped guts. You see what I'm saying? They're angry, and now the anger is another form of weakness when it's not done underneath the guise of revenge. You cannot um, express the element of anger or hatred without revenge being involved, and that's why 50 Cent is untouchable right now is because his anger and the hatred that he's expressing is not done out of a standpoint of trying to uh, intervene into somebody's career or anything like that. What he's doing is he's doing it out of the guy's revenge. So he's safe bound. There's ways to play this game. This game is chess, not checkers. But see, you've been listening to so much uh, the future and the Drake and all of this, which that is also weak. Like I was explaining the synthetic sounds, they're using a lot of computer sounds on the mind which is distorting the human as we look at human history. Human history has never listened to music made off of computer sounds. That is something that just started in the 1980s. So that is something completely new to the physiology of the human and will break it down until the human can get uh, normalized with it. And what that normalization may be, we don't know. 
the birth of new physical entities into our realm. We don't know, as that's what we're seeing is occurring with this whole LGBT community and the allowance that we're uh, that uh, we're letting them have, especially the ladies. And I have to say that because I'm a historian and I remember 1920s, angry women kicked ass and got liquor outlawed. It was the women who did it because it was the men who were getting drunk and going home and beating their wives. So the women got completely angry. They grabbed axes, and this happened all across the country, and they stormed up into the pubs, and they destroyed all the liquor bottles, and they told them, do not open this up, do not sell this shit to my husband. Boom, 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 and they shut it down. Okay. Now, what are women shutting down today? And do they have the capability to do so? Male and female come from the woman. So at, at the end of the day, she does have bottom line law. This especially because of beauty. You know? So, yeah. Yeah, I um actually recently learned, uh, there's this thing called drunk history uh, right now out. And <laughs> it's like a bunch of actors or whatever. Um, it's like a Netflix thing. It's a bunch of actors and they're... Um, just going through history. So they were talking about how women started prohibition and mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of them doing it, but there was like, you know, there's always that extra one. Mm -hmm. um, can you hear me fine? Cause it looks like my video is, is moving. No, I, your, 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 your audio is on point, but the video is a little bit late, but your audio is fine. Okay. Okay. Just a little latency, a little lag there, but no worries. So now uh, the, the, the most famous of these women, like, she had her place in history like yeah she would come in there and wreck shop like on some real stuff and she would lead a female mob like yo we're going to take down you know the whole um uh getting drunk thing yada 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 so you're right and exact on that yeah women have a lot of power so if they had power to just to start the prohibition back in the day guess what they got power to stop all this lgbtq stuff right now they have power to interject on that pedo stuff right now but is it being done? No. So then if it's not being done, you must be an ally to the scenario. And that's how I have to approach it. You know, I'm better safe than sorry in all situations. You know? So, um, but back to the kicked out of heaven and the plague, because that's where we're at right now. Um, it's safe to say about 60 to 70% of your everyday social, the way we use words to communicate with each other, all stem from the plague. So uh, things you've seen in movies or even jokes and pranks that you may have cracked on each other, um, sort of like uh, knocking at a door and saying, no one's here right now. Behind the door, that was a, that's a plague experience. Uh, Elmira, who is Frankenstein's husband, I mean, Frankenstein's wife, sorry about that. She has the big white streak in her hair. That comes from a situation of being scared to death or being frightened to death. And uh, that fright, is what made her hair white, and that fright came from a uh, plague experience of seeing dead bodies. Things you witnessed inside of cartoons, like turning stiff, turning pale, and then falling over, is documented in uh, pl plague experiences. The word abracadabra comes from uh, a magic um, talisman that was used to protect yourself from the plague, which really comes from an extreme ancient god named Abraxas, okay? Um, you have uh, the situation in African-American slave trade where people think, you know, um, if a black man spit on the sidewalk, he got lynched. That was a law in Europe before they even met any Africans for the, African, for the slave trade. That was a law in Europe and they did lynch him. If you spit on the sidewalk because they thought it was a... Uh, they thought it was, you know, transferring the plague because there was a lot of people who intentionally uh, passed on the plague by putting swabs on doorknobs. The red slash that you heard about inside the Bible actually comes from the multitude of different situations of uh, closing up houses during the plague. And when the grave, um, the uh, what is it called? The grave diggers is what they were called. Um, would go to a house and discover a house 
that where everybody was in the house dead from the plague, they, it was true that they would steal the sheets, steal the clothes. Sometimes they would die from the clothes because they caught the plague themselves. Sometimes they didn't. They would also do a lot of defiling and other crazy stuff to the bodies. But besides that, um, they would call the house shut up. And when they called the house shut up in reference to the term that we use today would be shut up with your mouth. We tell the person to shut up, which is similar to the house of the medieval because you have the stench that's coming out the front door. The front door is the stench that comes out of your mouth and your throat, you see? And that's why you have plaque on your teeth and plaque is also play spelled the same way. The Q and the G, just turn them around, okay? So um, the term shut up actually comes from a house being found uh, with plague bodies inside of it. They had to put the red slash on the door. These experiences were well documented before the Bible was written. The Bible was written in 1611. Um, these uh, activities are go all the way back down to the mid mid 1300s. And um, what's another one? Uh, yeah, go ahead if you want to interject. Go ahead because I know I'm out there right now with the plague stuff because a lot of people didn't know this stuff came from the plague. Feeding a person with a long handled spoon comes from the plague. Uh, ignoring somebody while they're yelling at you from the other side of the street or any form of ignorance of ignoring is ignorant at the same time. So to ignore is to be ignorant, you know, and um, those experience, all of that that is embedded inside of our social comes from that. You know, well, um, brother, I was just going to mention because we are winding up on the one hour mark um, okay. that, you know, I wanted to wrap things up at this point, but of course, brother, at this point, we've got to do a special video on the plague if you're apt to come back. We're almost at Bro, the bro, let me tell you something, because this is on the tip of my tongue. The undead and the World War Z and all of the walking dead stuff, zombies or the undead stem from the plague. Okay. Ooh. So, so you so we were on a revert of worshiping the walking dead which is a zombie status which is correlated with the weakness and that weakness brought us to the plague body if that is a real thing as of right now so but yeah i didn't talk about the undead i didn't talk about werewolves witches i got there's tons of subjects in this stuff bro so we can do as many shows as you want to you know and i'm gonna get you i'm gonna send you some free copies of the books as well Oh my God, you know what, brother? That really means so much to me. Um, so with that said, could you tell the people who you are and where they can find you? And of course the book at, please. Um, my name is Keenan Booker. That's K-E-E-N-A-N, Booker, B-O-O-K-E-R. And my alias is the God 720. You can take either name and put them in Amazon, put them in uh, Google. You can go to KeenanBooker.com. You can go to the God 720com That's the with two E's. And you can go to StargatePublishing.com. You can make your purchases now. They're pre-ordered. They'll be, they'll be at your house by the end of the month. And, um, yeah, it's a beautiful piece of work. I'm going to tell you that. It's very potent, you know. Oh, the, the, yeah. The and kickedoutofheaven.com, too. Died. The computer died. Kickedoutofheaven.com. I don't know if y'all can hear me or not. Where am I? Jesus. No, I can hear you. Jesus. All right, that's, that's there. That's racism. You there, bro? Brother, are you there? I don't know what happened with the homies camera or whatever, but yeah, y'all check me out. It says we still live right now. So check me out on Chrome TV. 
Check me out at dguide720.com, kenanbooker.com, stargatepublishing.com, kickedoutofheaven.com, theblackmansbible.com. All right? You can check me out there. And all the scholars are at millenniumdvds.com. All right? So peace. Peace, peace, family. This your boy, Young Pharaoh, and you are now watching Crumb TV. Naomi from Chicago. You're watching Crumb TV. Hi, Jake, and I'm watching Crumb TV. You're watching Crumb TV. This is Ashanti. I am watching Crumb TV. I'm a Crumb fan. Hold on, family. Hold on. Hold on. Surprise! This is Romney Tep Kweb, global distributor of the Rosarian Solar Circle Calendar, and you are watching Crumb TV. This is the real Remy Red, and I am 